probably not a problem. Probably, but I'm showing a small description. Come here! Gordon! Get away from the feet of thunder! Sometimes science isn't all it's cracked up to be. Back in 1998, Valve reshaped the landscape of gaming with Half-Life, which later saw many other releases. What you're looking at here is the original Dreamcast version, which never saw the light of day, even though it is a very good port with some obvious issues. You can be stuck looking at a loading screen from time to time, it's still a very close resemblance of that epic and pioneering PC title, setting the benchmark which I covered in far more detail in my previous analysis of the backwards compatibility titles and a brief history of the Half-Life series and Valve's excellent work there back in 2017, January 2017, when this original BC title hit Xbox and was pushed forward. But we're not here for the original title or even to reminisce about the brilliance of the second one which you can check out more detail in my previous video. The link is below and on screen. No, we're here to check out the enhanced X version and just what it offers up. And I've also taken a look at the S model which seems to have a small amount of updates due to the fact that it also has a 900 meg download to update the patch and the backwards compatibility but this may only be linked to all the enhancements that the X version delivers as it probably doesn't differentiate between the two. Yep, he's finally returned. No, not Gordon Freeman, an X enhanced title. It's been a while since we've seen one, around six months in fact, but we are now back with an X enhanced title over the original Xbox 360 and even the Xbox One. Now the standard options for all X titles across 360 is 16 times an isotropic filtering and an improvement to the refresh rate to the target that the game set, along with the addition of V-Sync being fully engaged, but Half-Life 2 was never guilty of this. As it stands at the moment though, visually we are looking at a very similar title across the board. Last time and on Xbox 360, all titles ran a native 1280x720p and that hasn't changed here on the Xbox One S with this new update. It still runs the same resolution and pretty much identical performance statistics which I covered before. So what does the X enhanced version offer? Well, nine times the resolution. As you can clearly see here, moving from the Xbox One S to the X is a huge improvement in image clarity and stability. Using that increase in pixel resolution means you no longer get jagged edges and shimmer across movement and sub-pixel breakup, which is evident across the entire game, even on a 1080p screen. But on a 4K one, this is an absolute transformation, taking that native 1280x720p resolution and increasing it three times in both directions gives you an increase in pixel throughput of over 8 million pixels, which is a transformation here on the screen. You can even see it here through YouTube compression. The downside is there is no retexturing of assets and no remastering of assets, so everything looks pretty much old school and blurry. Once you get up close to objects, faces, details, it's all very, very limited. But this is a free upgrade, not touching the game code at all, all done at the driver level or API level, directly by Microsoft's engineers, and it is a transformation to this title. You can now run this very old title at a native 4K on a console which was previously only available on PC. The actual details themselves and the lack of any anti-aliasing at all in the title, it was sacrificed here from the MSAA that the PC version had, is obviously a little bit of a downer but using this high resolution on a 1080p you get super sampling which makes it incredibly clean and clear, much better than a 1080p PC version but the texture quality assets and the memory limitation of the 360 doesn't give you the same quality assets which admittedly aren't that high on the PC version but they are slightly better than what's available here. It's still an impressive upgrade and certainly a welcome one for free. So now we've seen the increase to the resolution and the actual quality itself, texture filtering also benefits from this which you can see much better but again due to the low quality resolution of the textures themselves it's not really a standout feature that you would notice in much more modern titles. Performance is the other difference. When I compared the original Xbox 360 which hasn't changed there's no point me dipping back into it here. It still has 
had frame pacing issues from its cap and V-Sync 30 FPS lock, well 33 millisecond frame time. We saw a very similar metric, almost identical between the 360 and the Xbox One S when I originally tested it back in 2017. And what we see here comparing the S to the X is that throughput increase and the in massive increase to everything else in the title means you get an almost similar, if not identical performance metric with the same stutters at saving points and loading sectors as the whole game is gridded off into sections and then loads them in as you hit certain points. You still get pauses and loading sections in the title which are quicker ever so slightly on the X than they were on the 360 and the S even, but it's not a transformation to the level that the visual quality improvements are. It does hold that 30 FPS quite well, but due to the consistent frame pacing issues which are still present on the title, it still feels as if it's dropping frames when actually it's just jumping between 16, 33 and then 50 milliseconds all over the place, which can cause the control system to feel a little clunky and slow and unresponsive at times, but if you've played it on the 360 and enjoyed it, then it's still as good as ever. There's obviously far more titles in the package which all are locked to 30 FPS and also see that increase to 4K resolutions. You can still play Team Fortress online, you can play the brilliant Portal, and obviously Episode 2 and 3 is also present. It is a great package that can be picked up for next to nothing now, and this enhanced version really makes it worthwhile to just dip back in and enjoy those moments of nostalgia when you very first played these groundbreaking titles from Valve. I do miss the heady days of Valve pushing the limits of PC technology and really pushing games forward, rather than sitting back and scooping the money off the table that the Steam Marketplace delivers. But if they inevitably do announce any Episode 3 title at some point, it will create fever pitch the likes of which we have never seen before. There obviously are small elements that stand out quite easily on a 4K screen, but looking at the game as it stands, remember this has been totally touched by the Microsoft engineers only at the API level. No game code gets touched in these versions. Certainly Team Fortress 2 is the best looking one due to the simple vertex shading, colour passes and the simple textures in the game. It stands out much better due to this increase in resolution, still at a 30 FPS title. But also the menu sections use video files and also the video files in the game, which can also stand out a little easy because the still running 1080p and don't panic even if you go into the menu screen you can choose the different resolutions which was available on the Xbox 360 version within the dashboard even though it says 1080p here it's definitely running at 4k no matter what your output is set on the Xbox One X. Anyway, that's it for now. It wasn't a long one, it was just a quick look. You can see a few more minutes of frame rate analysis between the X and the S and that 4k improvement to visual quality. Also, if you are into PC gaming, then please stick around this weekend as I have something nice and brand new upcoming which hopefully will interest many PC gamers if you are interested in that environment. And I have many other things on the back burner to finish off and complete, but as this is a part-time thing, again I am self-funded and completely independent, this is just something I do on the side, time is always an issue. But I will be back very soon with more content and articles. If you can, share this video where appropriate, talk about me on, or talk to me on Twitter, and I'll catch you on the next one.